Adams, I'm doing a right-handed search. After assessing structural integrity and making contact with the victim, the first firefighter of the rescue team will secure the nozzle and lay on top of the holes so they can act as an anchor and provide protection for the trapped firefighter. Rescuer 2 will advance enough line into the room so that they're able to create a bend in the holes forming the first horseshoe. It's important that this bend is placed on the midsole of one of Rescuer 1's boots. The leg that's chosen needs to be fully extended and locked out throughout the extraction. Once the bend is in place, Rescuer 1 will then lay on top of the holes that's leaning into the hole. This will create a fixed point for the trapped firefighter to grab and prevent the holes from being pulled into the hole. It's also important that Rescuer 1 secures enough line that they're able to work the nozzle in a circular pattern. This will allow them to knock down any visible fire and create an area of refuge for the trapped firefighter below. The second rescuer will form another bend in the hose, creating the second horseshoe, thus giving this technique its name, the double horseshoe. Enough line is advanced into the hole so that the trapped firefighter below is able to straddle it and face the anchor end and firefighter on the nozzle. Okay, as far as the victim's positioning and responsibility. Now, when you're training, Ideally, the victim should be blacked out because that's simulating real conditions where the rescue team can't see the victim and the victim can't see the rescue team. So to work on orientation, you should black out the victim. Uh, we actually work with belay lines and a safety mat just for added protection, but uh, we just have the safety mat in place so the belay line doesn't affect camera angles. So as the hose line's coming down, you heard the team say, face the anchor side of the hose. Really, when the hose is coming down, the anchor's established. The victim's feeling up for the holes and they should start pulling on it. And they're gonna they're gonna actually grab and face the section that's not moving. So as I pull on, you see the anchor end is moving? I pull on this end, this end is moving. So if I grab one end of the or section of the holes that's moving, I know that's not the one I want. I'm gonna grab this end. That's the one I'm gonna be facing as they pull me out. They keep feeding the holes lying down until I got enough to straddle the holes. Now once I do, and I'm in that position, I tell them to take up tension. I'm facing the anchor end. Now, a couple instructors teach an alternate technique, and what they do is, give me a little slack, guys. They take their foot, and they hook their heel, take tension up again, and what they'll do is they'll bring the legs in between, or the holes in between their legs, but they have one knee bent, and the holes hooked on the top of their foot, right around the heel. Now, what this will do is it'll help take some pressure off between your legs, but it's not the safest position to be. 
The reason we use belay lines is we've actually had firefighters actually bucked off the holes, almost like a bronco or a bull, when they're yanking them out. So this might make it a little easier for you to, to get pulled out, but it's not as safe. So really what we recommend, slack, is just cowboy up, get the holes between your legs, and try to get the pressure more focused on your tailbone. And you're gonna stay as upright as you can. Now, let me uh, get my lid strap in place. Okay, so I'm facing the line. When those cadence come into play and I got tension and I feel that pressure on my tailbone, I'm gonna stay as upright as I can. I'm gonna, when they say ready, I grab the holes and squeeze it, squeeze it as tight as I can. When they say pull, I'm gonna start pulling myself up like I'm climbing a roll. When they say reset, I'm gonna loosen my grip, shift my body around so I stay vertical because the tendency to happen, or what can happen, is as you're yanking this holes up, I can drop forward and that's when you can rotate off the line. So you really gotta use a lot of muscle, a lot of strength to keep yourself vertical. As soon as I can grab the threshold of the floor, take advantage of that because that's gonna be easier to hold on to than the holes, okay? All right, call the cadence guys, Rock, you go ahead. I'll Ready, pull. pull. Reset. Ready, pull. Reset. Ready, pull. Rescuer 2 is in charge of the operation, gives the cadence, and controls the tempo of the extraction. The three cadence given are ready, pull, and reset. On the ready command, both rescuers 2 and 3, as well as the trapped firefighter, grab the holes as tight as they can. On pull, the line is lifted as straight as possible out of the hole, and both rescuers 2 and 3 step back in unison. On the reset command, rescuer 3 will hold the line in place as rescuer 2 moves back up to the edge of the hole. Once in position, rescuer 3 can then move up and the procedure is repeated. Rescuers 2 and 3 should position on opposite sides of the hose line. This will allow them to get a closer and better grip on the line, providing for a more efficient extraction. As the team steps back, a second friction point will be created at the edge of the hole. On the reset command, it's important that Rescuer 3 holds the holes in place until Rescuer 2 has a firm grip on the line before they move back up into position. When the trapped firefighter starts to reach the threshold, Rescuer 1 may need to move the nozzle to provide more clearance. As soon as they can, the trapped firefighter should reach for the edge of the floor. This will help to further reduce their profile and take some weight off the rescue team. Rescuers 2 and 3 will continue to lift the firefighter out as far as they can while watching for clearance and entanglements. The whole while the trapped firefighter should assist as much as possible. When the firefighter is out about three quarters of the way, rescuer three can hold the line in place, allowing rescuer two to move up and assist the firefighter the rest of the way out.